DNA hybridization is a process that can be performed in order to test how closely related different species may be and it uses their DNA to do this. So what allows this to happen is if we have DNA and DNA is heated up enough what will happen is the bonding within the double helix is going to separate so the two strands that are making up the double helix of DNA will come apart if heated enough because the bonds will break up. Now what happens is then if we allow that DNA to cool once, uh, once more the double helix is going to reform so if we heat it up the double helix will split the two strands will split apart but then they'll reform if the DNA is allowed to cool back down. Now what we can do is we can take this process and we can f perform it using DNA of multiple species in order to test how related those species are. So if we add in a number of different species DNA and do this DNA hybridization process then we're able to use this as a tool to ch test how closely related they may be. So let's take for example species 1. So let's ha let's use uh, we'll go species species 1 species 2 we'll use three species three species here. So we've got species 1, species 2, species 3. So here's the DNA of species 1 there's a double helix. We're also drawing a double helix for species 2 in red and then we'll make a blue double helix for species 3. So the first step of DNA hybridization would be to heat up the DNA of these species. The two strands of DNA will separate and then the helix, double helix will reform when they cool down. So firstly Let's imagine that species 1, we haven't added in any DNA of any other species, we're just using species 1, we heat the DNA, DNA up, the two strands separate and we allow them to uh, reform. So what we'll see is, um, so after, um, say, uh, after recalling, what we would see is, Obviously, obviously those two strands of DNA would reform and they're going to reform, uh, the bonds are going to reform with a 100% match. So basically what's going to happen is the DNA is going to reform, all the bonds are going to be, the base is going to be in the correct place to bond nicely and everything's going to match up 100% again. Let's have a look at a second scenario. Imagine that we add species 1 plus species 2 DNA together in the DNA hybridization process. So once again let's have a look at what would happen after recooling. So imagine that DNA from species 1, species 2 has been heated up so that the bonds in the DNA are going to split apart after cooling, once we've got, well, when we've got both of these two species DNA joined together, what we can do, or what we can see is the DNA strands of two different species trying to join together and trying to match up together. And we might see something like this occur. So you can tell that uh, in the middle here, I've got a bit of a bubble where obviously the DNA wasn't able to match up perfectly because there's some difference in that DNA sequence. So let's say, for example, we'll call this one a 75% match. So basically what this means is that this is uh, kind of an okay, an okay match. So it's obviously not obviously not extremely closely related but there is a little bit of a relation there between these two species. Now let's imagine that we're heating up species 1, or we're adding species 1 in with species 3. And let's imagine that these particular two particular species are actually are actually quite different. So what we can see is if we complete a DNA hybridization with two species which are quite different, then after DNA, DNA hybridization, after we heat up species one and species three's DNA, the strands separate and then try and rejoin 
with one another interspecially, we might end up with quite a poor match if they're not very closely related. So let's say this is, for example, a 33% match. So we've got three different or three varying levels of relatedness. So obviously species one is 100% related to species one because it's the same species. From this DNA hybridization, the reforming of the double helix between species one and species two, we can see they're somewhat similar. There's about a 75% match. And finally, what we can see after recalling species three, when adding their DNA with species one, the double helix had trouble forming between those two species, the DNA of those two species. We end up with a 33% match. We can tell that the relationship or relatedness between species one and species, species three is quite poor. So the process of DNA hybridization involves heating of DNA, allowing bonds between these two strands to separate, cooling and allowing a helix to reform. And what we can do is use this to see how closely related species, different species are using this DNA hybridization process.